Life is not easy for any of us, but what of that? We must have perseverance and above all, confidence in ourselves. Nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. One never notices what has already been done. One can only see what remains to be done. A scientist in her laboratory is not a mere technician. She is also a child confronting natural phenomena that impress her as though they were fairy tales. Be less curious about people and more curious about ideas. I was taught that the way of progress was neither swift nor easy. There are sadistic scientists who hurry to hunt down errors instead of establishing the truth. I am one of those who think like Nobel, that humanity will draw more good than evil from new discoveries. I have frequently been questioned, especially by women, of how I could reconcile my family life with a scientific career. Well, it has not been easy. All my life, though, the new sights of nature made me rejoice like a child. You cannot hope to build a better world without improving the individuals. To that end, each of us must work for our own improvement and at the same time share a general responsibility for all of humanity. Our particular duty being to aid those to whom we think we can be most useful. I am among those who think that science has great beauty. Humanity needs practical men who get the most out of their work and, without forgetting the general good, safeguard their own interests. But humanity also needs dreamers for whom the disinterested development of an enterprise is so captivating that it becomes impossible for them to devote their care to their own material profit. We must have perseverance and above all, confidence in ourselves. We must believe that we are gifted for something. Scientists believe in things, not in people. We must not forget that when radium was discovered, no one knew that it would prove useful in hospitals. The work was one of pure science, and this is a proof that scientific work must not be considered from the point of view 
of the direct usefulness of it. It must be done for itself, for the beauty of science. And then there is always the chance that a scientific discovery may become like the radium, a benefit for mankind. Certain bodies become luminous when heated. Their luminosity disappears after some time, but the capacity of becoming luminous afresh through heat is restored to them by the action of a spark and also by the action of radium. Radium is not to enrich anyone. It is an element. It is for all people. So perished the hope founded on the wonderful being who thus ceased to be. In the study room to which he was never to return, the water buttercups he had brought from the country were still fresh. You must never be fearful of what you are doing when it is right. We must believe that we are gifted for something and that this thing, at whatever cost, must be attained. When one studies strongly radioactive substances, special precautions must be taken. Dust, the air of the room, and one's clothes all become radioactive. After all, science is essentially international, and it is only through lack of the historic sense that national qualities have been attributed to it. About a wedding dress. I have no dress except the one I wear every day. If you are going to be kind enough to give me one, please let it be practical and dark so that I can put it on afterwards to go to the laboratory. It was like a new world opened to me, the world of science, which I was at last permitted to know in all liberty. Sometimes my courage fails me and I think I ought to stop working, live in the country and devote myself to gardening. But I am held by a thousand bonds and I don't know when I shall be able to arrange things otherwise, nor do I know whether, even by writing scientific books, I could live without the laboratory. The various reasons which we have enumerated led us to believe that the new radioactive substance contains a new element, which we propose to give the name radium. This means that we have here an entirely separate kind of chemistry for which the current tool we use is the electrometer not the balance, and which we might well call the chemistry of the imponderable. We cannot hope to build a better world without improving the individual. Towards this end, each of us must work for our own highest development, accepting at the same time our share of the responsibility in the general life of humanity, our particular duty being to aid those to whom we think we can be most useful.
I believe international work is a heavy task, but that it is nevertheless indispensable to go through an apprenticeship in it at the cost of many efforts and also of a real spirit of sacrifice. However imperfect it may be, the work of grandeur deserves our support. It is my earnest desire that some of you should carry on this scientific work and keep for your ambition the determination to make a permanent contribution to science. We must act. Without a doubt, these dreamers do not deserve wealth because they do not desire it. Even so, a well-organized society should assure to such workers the efficient means of establishing their task in a life freed from material care. We have no money, no laboratory, and no help in the conduct of this important and difficult task. It was like creating something out of nothing. It is important to make a dream of life and of a dream reality. A great discovery does not issue from a scientist's brain ready-made like Minerva springing fully armed from Jupiter's head. It is the fruit of an accumulation of preliminary work. First principle, never to let oneself be beaten down by persons or events. You'll never make me believe Women were made to walk on stilts. There is nothing more wonderful than being a scientist. Nowhere I would rather be than in my lab, staining up my clothes and getting paid to play. There is no connection between my scientific work and the facts of private life. Men of moral and intellectual distinction could scarcely agree to teach in schools where an alien attitude was forced upon them. Have no fear of perfection. You'll never reach it. My husband and I were so closely united by our affection and our common work that we passed nearly all of our time together. This abnormal situation resulted in exciting the patriotic feeling of youth in the highest degree. One of our pleasures was to enter our workshop at night. Then, all around us, we would see the luminous silhouettes of the beakers and capsules that contained our products. It can be easily understood that there was no place in our life for worldly relations. I continued my efforts to educate myself. This was no easy task under the Russian government of Warsaw. 
yet I found more opportunities than in the country. Life is not easy for any of us. If you see anything vital around me, it is precisely that spirit of adventure which seems indestructible and is akin to curiosity. Just remember, you will find that one special love that you know is right, but for some reason, just doesn't last. The death of my husband, coming immediately after the general knowledge of the discoveries with which his name is associated, was felt by the public, and especially by the scientific circles, to be a national misfortune. More and more, I feel the need for a house and a garden. We should not allow it to be believed that all scientific progress can be reduced to mechanisms, machines, gearings, even though such machinery also has its beauty. Neither do I believe that the spirit of adventure runs any risk of disappearing in our world. During the course of my research, I had occasion to examine not only simple compounds, salts and oxides, but also a great number of minerals. We must keep our certainty that after the bad days, the good times will come again.